guys. Um, it's been a few weeks since I did a video update. Um, I've had some eye issues and I was really scared that I was going to lose my ability to read possibly permanently, but things look like they're going to be okay. So I've been very distracted and um, haven't been focusing on uh, that much else in my life right now. But um, I have some very exciting news. Um, bunch of news. Uh, I keep forgetting to mention in my videos that a few weeks ago, probably more than a month ago, I posted um, about my visit to the Deering Banjo Factory in March. Um, so that's up on the blog under the Inspirations tab. Um, I also got this really cool, uh, very sturdy gig bag for my banjo. Um, it's an Axis Stage 3 and currently the latest model is um, on closeout so you can get that for a discount. It's not a cheap case even on closeout but um, it's really really good and my this banjo came with a hard case and it was just so unwieldy like I kept banging it on the doorways on the way out the door trying to like hold open the door while to getting this out and then closing it and getting in the car and it was pretty awful um, so I basically was like I can't deal with this and I sold it so previously with my old banjo I had bought an Axis Stage 1 and um, and I, I just didn't think it was patent enough. I was, it felt like it was, it was a bit delicate. So this one, um, I think it's pretty much as mo as close to a hard case as you're gonna get while still being a gig bag. Um, I you know wouldn't sit on it or anything, but uh, but it's it's really great. So that's also up on the blog um, in the gear section. Um, so cataloging, uh, documenting everything. Um, and the third thing is uh, that I um, started taking, well, one so far, I took one online class with Dan Levinson, and um, he, uh, you guys might have heard of him, he um, has a lot of banjo teaching books and stuff, and he's so great. And um, uh, so first I'm going to play the progress I've made on Arkansas Traveler pre-Dan, um, and I uh, kind of made a big uh, a step where... I was like, hey, it would sound cooler if I did things this way, and I kind of figured out on my own how to do it, and previously I was very, very much attached to um, the tab and just like reading stuff verbatim, and this is like my first little steps toward improvising, so I thought that was, you know, I was very proud of myself. So um, I'm gonna play Arkansas Traveler using my old way of holding the banjo, and then I'm going to talk about what Dan and I talked about in the lesson and what I need to work toward and it's kind of like relearning how to hold the banjo and it's very, um, you know, it, it, you get used to one thing and it's very hard to, uh, to change. So, so I'm going to have to relearn. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to play the same songs as well with the new positioning, but we'll talk about that. So first, um, Arkansas Traveler with my own little tweaks to it. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> So, so I didn't play it as uh, evenly, as cleanly as I would like, but that gives you an idea of um, kind of what I've been working on. Um, okay, so Dan and I talked about, so he said, what you want to do is hold the banjo on your right knee. Um, and, and basically you want it to be in a position where you want to be very relaxed, so ergonomically um, you want both arms and just to be in a really, really relaxed position. Um, and, and what it came down to is hold your uh, left hand out in front of you. What's the default sort of relaxed position that you're in? And just kind of bring, guide the neck toward it. Um, and then for me here, I ended up, you know, some people use their arm like this, but it, that's really uncomfortable for me. I kind of ended up putting the crook of my elbow um, where the armrest is, and God, I love having this armrest. Before I had got one on my during good time, it was ouch. 
Um, and that also um, ends up putting your hand like where the scoop is, kind of naturally. So, and, and that's kind of where people, a lot of people like to have the tone. So a lot of it was use, use your arm to kind of get this um, and, and your whole arm should be just relaxed and that will let you, um, and the other thing was doing, I was doing a lot of this movement and he said you want to change it into a wrist movement. Um, so just like minimal, minimal motion, minimal effort um, to try to uh, use as little energy as possible. So um, anyway, uh, work through the double D scale. He wants me to uh, search it out with my fingers and find it, but I don't think that really works for me. I think I need to work on it by playing it, by looking at it until I get comfortable enough and then let finger memory take over after that. Um, I'm very visual, so, so seeing it, I, I can't just start with finger memory. I need to see what I'm doing and then once um, get, I get comfortable enough with it, just my brain will will adjust. So uh, double D scale. Let's see. All right, that leaves a lot of work. I only practiced it one day, sometime last weekend haven't come back to it and I'm like, I owe these guys a video. Um, so I'm gonna be working on double D scale, getting used to this new position. Um, really, it, it feels like I'm relearning my whole body position. Um, and then also he sent me a tab for um, drop thumb double D scale. Um, I'm not gonna share that online because it's his uh, intellectual property, but um, I believe it's from his Clawhammer Banjo from scratch book. Um, so that's. Dan Levinson. So anyway, um, he and I are going to continue uh, internet lessons um, every, probably every three or four weeks um, as needed. And that's that's really great for me because I don't make enough progress in one week to have a, a weekly or even um, bi-weekly lesson. Um, and then he's going to be in my town in during the summer, so I'll get to meet him in person. That, that'll be really great because, you know, in person is just so much, um, so much better, like, where they can see what you're doing, give you direct feedback um, on your position and stuff, especially since um, I'm getting I'm getting back to basics now. Um, anyway, so uh, that's a lot of the news that I have. Oh, uh, I... <laughs> okay, you know how like there's this joke about like gear acquisition syndrome or banjo acquisition syndrome on the internet? Um, I got myself a little travel banjo. It's a 19... And something three quarters, I think, scale. Um, for reference, this is twenty four point seven five inch scale, so it's it's a little bit shorter. It's it's got a ten inch pot. Um, it's really cute. Uh, so it was really really inexpensive, like barely over the cost of materials. And I was like, oh, and it sounded great from the video. So I was like, let me get this. Um, um, you know, there are there were some shortcuts in the workmanship um, because of the the cheap cost, like the. Um, the hook nuts here on the travel banjo weren't long enough to um, cover the end of the, the hooks, so it was actually the the screws were like snagging onto my pants and, and stuff. So, but the builder has been super helpful. So I um, he suggested going to Ace Hardware and getting little hex nuts and putting those on the inside. So I did that. I did that yesterday, and um, and and then the. Uh, the tuners are, it does have planetary tuners on it, but they're like these really cheap Asian ones and they um, they just keep slipping. Like it's driving me crazy, especially the fifth string. Like I can't even get through a whole song without it slipping. So it, he said it worked okay for him, but clearly having problems. So um, I am splurging for Goto tuners and uh, which are a significant percentage of the cost of the entire banjo. Um, and uh, and I also decided to get those the ivory buttons, which I really like, and they're really expensive, but I'm like, okay, like it makes me happy every time I touch them. So anyway, um, I will attempt to replace those myself, so I will document that on the blog. Um, he said there's a bit of glue on the fifth string one, so uh, put a hairdryer on it, um, try to get it out. Um, probably getting out is not gonna be as, as much of an issue as getting the new one in, 
um, depending if it fits well. The other ones are just screwed into place with a hex nut, so it shouldn't be that hard. Um, yeah, so, oh, and the other thing is I got this really great um, travel band. If you guys ever get a travel banjo, um, like a C scale size one, um, a baritone ukulele uh, gig bag fits perfectly, um, can fit perfectly. And I got one, um, do all my research on the web. I got one made by Kala. It's the Kala um, Deluxe model, and it's like thirty dollars. It's such a great bag for that price. It's it's really nice, and just everything is so small and light compared to this. Um, this is not even that big and heavy. So this is probably like five pounds, and but just like feels like a beast next to the tiny little thing. So anyway, that one I'm not going to be afraid to take it around with me. It's convenient and um, and and light and cheap. So. I wanted to worry about something happening to it. Okay, um, anyway, I think my latest videos have just been like, let's keep it short and sweet, and today I've been rambling on and on. So um, check out the During Banjo Factory post on my blog. It's pretty cool. Um, I took lots of photos. They were really nice. Um, and I like to see how stuff is made. So, um, and uh, I will talk to you guys next week, hopefully after practicing more of this, this position. And hopefully, like, uh, whatever I'm covering in my lessons with Dan are going to be helpful to anyone learning from scratch because I think um, he's a really good teacher and, and he's been, you know, thinking about all this, how to best uh, play and teach for a long time. So um, I will pass on that knowledge. Okay. All right. Bye.